for years, I fought myself between having a Google Calendar and a paper planner. And I love the paper planner concept and being able to have the freedom to really plan and write and doodle and do whatever you need to do in a paper planner. But I also loved the convenience of a digital planner like a Google Calendar. And I tried to do both, but I really struggled to keep them both up to date with the same information. And I would ultimately forget something and I would end up double booking myself or completely miss an appointment or an event. And eventually, over time, I found out what worked best for me and I'm happy to say it works wonderfully. So that is what I kind of want to go over today kind of want to give an overview of what I do and then help you ask yourself four questions to help you determine which scheduling option is best for you. Go paper or go digital. And I also have a big tip at the end that no matter what option you choose, you want to keep this in mind. Are you ready to stop the chaos, the stress, the overwhelm that's filling your life? I'm Renee Matt, and together you and I are going to build simple routines that are going to change your life. When you put these habits into practice, you're going to be able to organize your life in a way where you can be there for your family, pay off your debt, save money, your house can stay organized, you don't have to stress about what's for dinner, and you still get time for yourself. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to the Routine Advantage Podcast. I love talking about paper planners and digital planners and scheduling in general. I think it's kind of a fun topic. So if this is something you struggle with, I encourage you to just have some fun with it because it makes it so much more enjoyable. I still sound very weird. I am not fully recovered, but I don't know how long this is going to stick around. My husband has been sick for a few weeks now and not necessarily sick enough to like incapacitate him, but it's just that cough lingering. And that seems to be what mine is doing as well. So we'll see how many episodes I end up having a weird voice, but we're, we're just going to keep going because otherwise it would just take me out for a while. So uh, this episode actually was inspired by a question that came in our Facebook community. And Karen H had asked, is there an episode that explains why you prefer a paper planner versus a digital calendar? Or is it something you use to supplement your digital calendar? And I love this question. And I'm glad that she brought it up because I did do an episode a long time ago when I first started. So back on episode 34, I um, that one is how to use a paper planner and Google Calendar effectively to get organized and get things done. So if you have not listened to that episode, that would be an amazing one to go back and listen to. And I'll kind of give you more of the step-by-steps to get this set up for yourself if you want to do it the way that I do it. Now, I do... Uh, use a Google Calendar and a paper planner together because I have learned over the years what works best for me. And before I kind of give you that overview in case you don't already know how I use them, I do want to go over these four questions, which this whole episode is based on. So I want to give you four questions to ask yourself so that you can decide which option is best for you because what is best for me might not be what is best for you. So it's just some things to kind of view and ask yourself before you make a decision on which one to go with. So let's go right into those and then we'll continue on with my other tips. So number one, the first question you want to ask yourself is which one do you have with you most often? And this is what I was running into is because I was loving the idea of the paper planner, but I didn't always have my paper planner with me. And I grew up with this being, my mom is a big paper planner person. And there's a huge joke in our family that it was mom's paper planner in her purple bag. And we always needed to know where mom's planner was. And it's it's just, I won't go into it too much and I won't embarrass her. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Um, but it, it was always just a big joke. We used to tease her about her paper planner. 
And um, I actually really love the idea of the paper planner, but like I said, it's not always with me. So if something comes up or somebody asks you if you're available on a certain weekend, things like that, you don't always have it with you unless you're lugging it around with you everywhere you go, which can be very inconvenient. So for me, I clearly have my phone with me. So having a Google Calendar that I can access on my phone or a computer that's available, or a tablet that's available, anything like that, was a lot easier for me to be able to access my schedule and not just relying on my paper planner. And also, it's easier to lose a paper planner or have something happen to it versus a Google Calendar. Because even if I break my phone, it's on the cloud. So if I break my phone and I have to replace my phone, all I have to do is log into the account and my schedule is still there. So that was a big one for me personally. Question number two is which one will be easiest to keep up to date? So this one is, again, a huge consideration that you want to think about because if you are somebody that is like, I am never going on my phone and updating when I'm going to be somewhere or an appointment or anything like that, it's going to be really hard to keep a calendar, a digital calendar up to date. Now, if you are uh, somebody that loves your paper planner and you never skip it and that is your go-to, then maybe that's the option for you. But if you don't always keep those things up to date, then that's a consideration as well. I was running into where I was trying to do both and I would just plug things into my Google calendar when it was convenient. But if I had my paper planner beside me, then I would just write it in there. Well, then I would forget sometimes to update the information on the other end. And that's where I was missing things or double booking myself because then later I would realize that I already had something plugged in on my other calendar version. Um, So that's what I was running into personally. And then question number three, you want to ask yourself, do you need to share your calendar with anyone? Now, this one won't apply to everybody. And even though I am married, I don't actually share my calendar with my husband because we, we just don't do that. But I know there are a lot of relationships where you share your calendar with your significant other or even sometimes your kids where you all have your own Google Calendar, but then you have the option to share your calendar with others and they can see it right alongside their calendar so you can kind of compare things. So if that is something that you really like in your family, that is something to consider that that is a very convenient thing to be able to just put all of those calendars up together, see where it all aligns, and you can uncheck it if you don't want to see it all the time, but you can pick and choose when you want to view somebody else's calendar. So that is very useful if that is something that is important to you. Um, And then question number four is which one helps you feel more organized? This one is going to probably take into consideration the other three questions because what you're going to keep up to date, what you're going to have with you most often so you don't feel lost, what you can share if needed, all of these things. If you have selected the one that works best for you, then you're probably going to feel the most organized with the option you chose. So I'm hoping that these questions kind of get your wheels turning to figure out which one is best for you. But my big tip here that I want to make sure I don't let you go without hearing is if you choose to do both and you want to do a paper planner and a digital planner, my biggest suggestion or biggest recommendation for you is to only choose one of them for scheduling commitments. And this is kind of goes into what I do for myself. So if you have not heard any of my previous episodes, what I do is I use my digital Google Calendar for all of my time commitments. That is my schedule. If anything gets booked, if anything needs to, if I need to check availability on anything, like that is going in my Google Calendar. What I use my paper planner for is organizing my week. So when you look in my paper planner, it is never more than a week out. It's blank from like the past next week. It is completely blank for the rest of the planner. 
And the reason I do it this way is because my Google Calendar is my schedule. That houses everything I need, all of my time commitments, everything like that. But when I sit down to plan out my week, I really like having the option to write on paper and to kind of get other things down in a an organized plan in an organized fashion. And that's where my paper planner comes in. So I am able to take my digital calendar or my Google calendar and look at it. And then I just plug in the stack of my day. So in my personal day, I am looking at my routines and my commitments. And all I'm doing is stacking what comes first in the day, what comes next. And it's very, very simple so that I can wrap my head around the the day that I'm going to have in the next week. And I start with Sunday and I go all the way through to Saturday and I just go day by day. And then I'm also able to plan out my annual task list, like what priority tasks am I pulling from that list to organize into my week. And when you're listening to my previous episodes, this will make a lot more sense. But Basically, I am trying to use my digital calendar for all the scheduling and then my paper planner goes with my whole flow of the week and helps me feel really prepared and organized for the upcoming week. So that is how I am able to use both. Even when I'm planning out my week in my paper planner, there are no timestamps going in there. Like I have the blocks of time where yes, it's like 5 a.m. to 9 a.m., 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and then 5 p.m. and beyond. But I'm not, if I'm putting in like a chiropractor appointment, I'm actually not putting in the time of the chiropractor appointment. I'm putting in what comes before, like all the things I need to get done before I leave for my chiropractor appointment, and then all the things that happen after that appointment, and I'm plugging them into my day stack. But when I actually look at time commitments, I'm looking at my Google Calendar to know when I actually need to be places. So that is for me what works really, really well because I always have my phone or some type of electronics with me that I can check my calendar and have it accessible if needed. And I don't have to have my paper planner with me at all times because sometimes I don't even like carrying a purse. So that is useful to not have to always have my paper planner with me. Now, if you want to use the same paper planner that I use because I absolutely love my paper planner. It is a very high quality and just gorgeous paper planner. And I actually have shared this recently. And unfortunately, they had switched the affiliate company that had the link. So if you were using my link before and it wasn't working, that is why. But I did get updated with the registry. So now my link is working again. So hopefully you don't have any issues. And if you ever do run into issues with it, please let me know so I can reach out to them. But it is at Horatio Printing.com and it's H-O-R-A-C-I-O P-R-I-N-T-I-N-G. And that's uh, HoratioPrinting.com. And then you just use code Renee15, which is R-E-N-A-E-1-5. And that will get you 15% off anything on their website. And my very favorite is the black leather bookbound version of their vertical dream planner. That is my like ultimate, like that is my favorite, but they also have a horizontal option if you don't prefer the vertical and they have the spiral or coil bound as well. And they are gorgeous. My sister has a coil bound one and so does my mom or actually I'm saying, I think my mom has the book bound version, but either way, (laughs) they are just so beautiful and they have all the new colors out and they have different uh, like prints. And they have the 2025 ones are released now and they're just absolutely gorgeous. The one thing to keep in mind is that once they sell out, they do not restock. So once they're gone, they're gone. So if there is one you have your eye on, you want to definitely grab it before they are gone if you really want a specific one. But if you want to order anything from them, definitely use Renee 15 and it will get you 15% off. So quick recap of the four questions that you want to ask yourself to see if the digital or paper planner version is best for you. We've got question number one is which one do you have with you most often? Question number two, 
Which one will be easiest to keep up to date? Question number three is, do you need to share your calendar with anyone? And question number four is, which one helps you feel more organized or you think would help you feel more organized? And the big tip to not forget that if you are choosing to use both, like I do, only use one of them for scheduling all of your time commitments so that you're not bouncing back and forth. So choose how you want to use them. But using it the way that I do, I love it where I'm doing my digital calendar with all of my schedule. And then my paper planner is more of my creative workflow to set up my week. And I absolutely love doing it that way. And it's way less stressful. But hopefully you can kind of tweak that and play with it and see if it works for you. But if Uh, the way I do it doesn't work for you. I hope these questions will allow you to really make the best decision that works for you. So if you have not left a review for the show yet, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. You can do it on any podcast app that you're listening on. You can usually rank and rate and review. So you can do the stars. You can sometimes write an actual review. And when I read those, I absolutely love it. Like they make my heart happy. And I am just so grateful that you have taken the time to leave a review or a rating. And not only does it help me continue and see what you are loving about the show, but also it spreads the word and gets people uh, like other people to see it on the app. And those podcast apps end up promoting it to more people, the more reviews you have. So they're not wasted and they are actually helping and they are doing something. So when you take time to leave those reviews, I really, really, really do appreciate it. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and I'll see you Monday. Did you love that episode or learn something useful? If so, would you do me a huge favor? My goal is to grow this podcast and help as many women as I can break free from the overwhelm so they can truly enjoy their life. The best way for me to do this is for you to leave a five-star written review on your podcast app and to share this episode with a friend or in your Instagram stories. I appreciate you being here. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you on the next episode. Take care.